If I was to stop you in the street and ask you to think of an animation studio, first you'd probably think about telling me to go away or, or feel vaguely threatened. The second thing you might do is think of Hanna-Barbera. All right, Disney. But after that, it would be Hanna-Bar... All right, Pixar. Okay, then. The third one would be Studio Ghibli. Uh, yeah, okay, yep, Studio Ghibli, fine. The fourth animation, stu DreamWorks. Totally forgot about them. The fifth one would be Fuzzy Door, Blue Sky, Gracie Films, Cartoon Network. Okay, okay, at some point you'd think of the Flintstones, Yogi Bear and Scooby-Doo and you'll feel terrible for ruining this intro which otherwise was brilliant. Stupid independent thought processes. Can you not ruin it for once? Anyway, look, let's pretend that the first studio you thought of was Hanna-Barbera and then we can start this again properly, yeah? It's a video about Hanna-Barbera after all, and it's about the budget Spectrum games put out by the software house High Tech. Well... High Tech Software were founded in 1988 by David A. Palmer. Initially, the team was made up of three men, David Thompson, Richard Rambo Morton and Gary Antcliffe. The team had previously worked for Virgin Mastertronic, but felt that they wanted to go and branch out on their own. And so High Tech would develop some games, they'd commission some games, and they'd publish a shed tonne of titles too. Sharing an office with sister company, PAL Developments, High Tech started out with a few non-licensed titles like Future Bike Simulator in 1990, but it was to limited success. It wasn't until deals were struck with King Productions, who were behind the Defenders of the Earth franchise, Warner Brothers and their Looney Tunes characters, and yes, Hanna-Barbera, that the money really began to roll in for High Tech. Pitching the majority of the Hanna-Barbera releases at pocket money prices of 2 and 3.99 saw high-tech become regular fixtures of the Spectrum chart for their short lifespan. The Hanna-Barbera characters were instantly recognisable to legions of children with not much money to spend, and so you can see how this might have happened. The deal was simple for high-tech. Hanna-Barbera would provide high-tech with storyboards and videos and would have a final veto on any graphics or design that they didn't like. They, for instance, weren't allowed to kill any of the characters. If Hong Kong Fui or Yogi ran out of energy, then they had to sit down or pop off screen. They weren't allowed to use soundtracks from the shows as Hanna-Barbera themselves didn't own the rights, so you wouldn't get a digital reproduction <coughs> of uh, any of those famous theme tunes like the Hong Kong Fooey theme or Scooby-Doo. Some of the characters are better known than others. Yogi, Wacky Racers and Scooby-Doo need no introduction to most of us, but Potsworth and Company and Rough and Ready may do in 2019. I'll try and give a brief overview of each show as we count down the high-tech Hannibal Bearer Spectrum Library. From the worst reviewed average score to the best in the big three Spectrum magazines, Crash, Your Sinclair and Sinclair User. Yep, you don't have to worry about my opinion in this video. If you're wondering where certain Hanna-Barbera titles are, well, it's because they're not made by high tech, so you won't see the likes of Scooby-Doo in the Castle Mystery. Yes, there's a link at the top of the screen if you want to watch my video on that. Likewise, if you're wondering where Defenders of the Earth or Roadrunner are, well, they're not here because they're not Hanna-Barbera cartoons. First off, a special mention for Oggy Doggy, my son, my son. Oh, that's a bad impression of Doggy Daddy, who was a character in the show. Um, yes, there was a few adverts for this, but it was never released. So here's a few screen grabs from the Commodore 64 version. My boy, my boy. Enough of that.
bottom of the list is Wacky Races, which I couldn't locate a review of online from any of the main Spectrum magazines. So, alas, Wacky Races finishes bottom. Wacky Races was all about the villainous pair of Darcy and Muttley and their attempts to win a race that was, yes, indeed, quite wacky. And they would attempt to win by cheating and trying to nobble a collection of other Hanna-Barbera creations. It's a platform game in a car, which is quite novel, and it plays a bit like a simpler kickstart. It's fine, and it's far from the worst on this list, but rules are rules, even though I made them up. Ah, oh, silly old me. Yogi Bear and Friends in the Greed Monster, a treasure hunt. And I think we will need a little lay down after that title. That's a hot mess. It's uh, sort of like a high-tech stroke Hanna-Barbera Avengers, I guess. Look, Oggy Doggy, Top Cat, Quick Draw McGraw, a pantheon of gods in animation. Unlike Avengers, it's uh, completely trash. Uh, the Yogi sprite from Yogi's Great Escape is placed in a flick screen maze and he has to rescue all his missing friends while hurling sweets around. Uh, the other non-yogi characters barely feature and the simplistic gauntlet style game just isn't a lot of fun to play. Save that pocket money for something else 80s time travelling child. Yogi Bear of Friends gets a miserable 58% overall. Oh well. Number 10, Top Cat. He cleans his testicles, Top Cat. He licks his genitals. Cat self-cleaning parody ditties aside, Top Cat is very similar to the previous title on the list. The flick screen maze game genre isn't one of high tech's strongest suits as Top Cat wanders around his alleyway home looking for his gang. I had more fun with this than Yogi and Friends, but I'd have a lot more fun if I could lick my testicles. Curse these ribs! Some wild swings in opinion give Top Cat 66% overall. Hong Kong Fooey, quicker than the human eye. In the game though, he sort of just slowly ambles about, although he does have a very pleasant little slappy footstep noise. Ah, oh, listen to his little pads. The vigilante police janitor Pooch was a fixture on children's television for much of my youth. And here he is in a martial arts high kicking trapes around a warehouse. Now, is it just me or do the enemies look like they're from a completely different game? Their design is so jarring when compared to dog chops here. I don't know. Uh, the game is alright, I guess. And it got a 67% overall. Fair enough. Uh, Yogi's Great Escape Yogi Bear, the world's foremost tie-wearing ur sign, is on the hunt for picnic baskets and he's on a trip to New York to rescue his pals from a zoo. A side-scroller against a tight time limit, Yogi is a tough but an okay platformer for the £3 asking price. Sinclair user really liked it. Crash thought it was okay, and your Sinclair thought it stank worse than a mauled park ranger. So Yogi gets 69% overall. Quick Draw McGraw. Look at him. If Quick Draw McGraw is a cowboy horse, does that mean he rides people? The equine quick draw finds himself in a proto sunset riders as he takes down outlaws and injuns <coughs> and Native American warriors with his six gun shooter. One for fans of people that like inferior versions of Green Beret but with a horse in them that's sort of anthropomorphic. Yeah, there's a lot of those fans around. Uh, only Crash reviewed it from the look of it. So we'll have to trust them, and they're blooming 70%, won't we? The 
Jetsons gave us a glimpse into a future that carried on being exactly like the early 60s, but with uh, terrifying robot maids and flying cars. It was another multi-level flip screen maze game, but probably the best one, as George and family try and complete menial tasks, proving that life will always be menial tasks and awful. Another big swing in opinion sees the Jetsons level out at 70%. A man. He's a superhero ant. Just like Paul Rudd, only this one, he's actually an ant. He's an actual ant, but in clothes. How bizarre. Atomant plays a lot like Bomb Jack, but with the caped insect diffusing bombs in a tight time limit. You must collect bombs in one at a time and throw them into Atomant's atomizer. It's alright this, perfectly playable and a bit different from your standard platform fare as you have to plan the best order in which to collect the bombs. It's a perfectly acceptable game and the mags agree, giving it an average score of 72%. Rough and ready in the space adventure. This cat and dog combo aren't particularly well known now, but I sort of remember them being on at some ungodly hour on TV AM or something. So it was either this or an Anne Diamond license game. I don't know if that will work. Oh, oh, there could be a Roland Rat game, and yes, they did make that. It was Ocean and Put It Out, actually. Uh, anyway, Rough and Ready are on an alien planet, and are once again here on a rescue mission for other characters. Uh, because uh, why write clever stories for a sub £5 platform game about some obscure old cartoon that will appeal to children? Um, this game is middle of the road platforming, but I like that main character sprite very well drawn. Uh, Rough and Ready gets a 73% overall score. Johnny Quest! Okay, get all the condom jokes out now. Go on. <sighs> this game is about a small boy. Yes, you're laughing about sexualizing kids, you monster. Who must rescue... <sighs> yep, rescue again. His father from Dr. Zinn, who plans on using Papa's badass science to make a laser. A big one. I actually quite like this game. The animation is nice and the gameplay is above average for a flip screen action platformer on a budget. Johnny was well received by the game's press and he gardened a 77% overall score. Well done Johnny! <laughs> Scooby Doo and Scrappy Doo at number 2. Oh god, not this smug little shit. And ignore that top billing for the big Great Dane as we have to r rescue, yes again really, uh, him and Shaggy as Scrappy Dappy Do, the pint-sized Larry bastard. He punches his way through the denizens of the castle with steely determination. And despite all the odds being against him, Scrappy Doo actually succeeds in grabbing the second place slot with an overall score of 79%. Well played, little dog. Now bugger off, everybody hates you. Pottsworth and Company it was known in America as Midnight Patrol, but it was renamed here because the BBC were worried that children being up after midnight just sounded a bit unacceptable. Potsworth and Company was a one-series 1990 Hanna-Barbera cartoon about a sarcastic Springer Spaniel and his gang of dream-protecting children. The game is actually a very, very good puzzle platformer with fantastic animation. It's very enjoyable stuff and is by some way the best game on the list. If you want to see more of Potsworth and Company, check out Buzzer H's video on it here. It's a well-deserved 87% average score, and it's got top spot, despite being probably the most forgettable character on the list. Well done, 
Pottsworth. Who are you again? And that brings it to a close. High Tech released a lot of games in a short period between 1989 to 1992. And then they were gone. Another example of an 80s British software house peaking very quickly and then disappearing. Uh, David A. Palmer Productions would continue to make games well into the 2000s. Further Hanna-Barbera games would continue, of course, to come out through various software houses on later formats. And uh, Yogi Bear now works as a sandwich artist in the non-eaten subway. And that's a wrap <laughs> from Yogi, I guess. Uh, okay, thanks, bye.